confession to make, and I think a lot of you may already know this, but I'm going to make the confession anyway. You could pretty rightly couch me as somewhat of a nerd. I've spent years in the tech industries, and one funny reality about that is ideas come from the most unexpected places at times. Sometimes you have an idea, but don't know how to state it. For me, that's where John Postel comes in. Hello and welcome to the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host. I'm Kurt. Today is Friday, the 5th of March of 2021. I am uh, here to talk today about a subject, who's John Postel? And hopefully I can enlighten you and in the process also give you something to think about in another direction that kind of is why I bring him up today. Welcome to everyone who's here on Rumble on the podcast and on YouTube and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for making my, particularly my Rumble videos, uh, relatively successful. I think I'm probably over 7,500 views for all of my videos at this point. Again, I'm small potatoes by comparison to a lot of the folks who are out that out there, and that's just how that has to be. You know, you got to work from the bottom to get to the top. That's pretty much how it works. And I may never get to the top, and I'm not, I won't be horribly disappointed if I'm never a Dan Bongino or Dinesh D'Souza or so many others. But the thing is that I that I want to continue to put stuff out there that I think are, are going to be useful to you. I want to take a minute to talk about an idea, and uh, give me a second because I've naturally I've lost the thing that I was using to get to that idea, and my computer's being a little ornery. Uh, but uh, I want to talk about. Well, let's start before we get to this particular thing that I'm that I want to look at and talk about. Let's talk first of all about. Uh, where the internet came from. Where did the internet come from? Well, it came from, a lot of people argue, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, creating a thing called DARPAnet, which which was a, a, a multi-machine, multi-protocol uh, type of system that allowed various uh, computers to talk to one another that would not have been able to do so normally over what I think, what mostly is a telephone backbone and various other things of that sort. You've heard that a particular politician, and I'm not going to go into name calling or anything like that at this point, was uh, responsible for that. But and, and and of course he that's not that's way overstated if it's anything at all. Um, that having been said, you might think if you're anything of an internet scholar or anything of that sort. Uh, that about people like Tim Berners-Lee when you talk about people who actually were responsible for the internet. For me, probably one of the most important people that I think of when I think about the internet is John Postel. Now, you've probably not even heard this guy's name. You're probably going, who the heck is John Postel? I urge you, I encourage you to look him up and to see what you find. There's lots of stuff out there. He literally has a site, I think it's postel.net, that was was his site, and I think it was Carnegie Mellon University. I don't remember now. It's been a while since I looked at all of this. Back in a, back about a million years ago, I'll put it that way, I researched the internet in ways that a lot of people don't. I went into the Internet Engineering Task Force's documents, what they called the Request for Comments, that were basically, many of them, fundamental to the creation of what you today know as the internet. And I found a name constantly, consistently, all over that documentation. That name was John, I think it's B. Postel, but it's John Postel. And uh, one of the things that happened as a result of my looking at all of that was I started to look into this man and who he was, and I found out that he was responsible for something that's today termed Postel's Law, which is also known as the Robustness Principle. And I'm going to put up a little thing so you can see, but basically uh, Postel's Law, also known as the Robustness Principle, states, be conservative in what you do, be liberal in what you accept from others. And it says further on that same thing that I'm putting up, uh, that I've put up, that John Postel wrote this in an early version of the TCP spec, TCP specification in 1980, it has, uh, and it has since been referred to as Postel's Law, or the Robustness Principle, as lots of people call it. Here's the thing. I sort of could have told you that I came to this conclusion before I saw Mr. Postel's writing of this, but it really cemented something in my head that I wish a lot of people would get. 
And that's particularly true where it comes to uh, interactions with other human beings. And that is, what you do, how you act, should typically be rather conservative than just about anything else. What you accept from others should allow for them to not be as conservative with you. Quickly outlining the initial problem that I think caused Mr. Postel to come to the conclusion that he did. Basically, there was this idea, and it is, you've got these packets of information that are coming to you over the Internet. And how all of this works, the details, eh, not all of that important for most people. They won't, they won't, you can look into it if you care, obviously, but they, most people won't care. But these packets of information would come over the Internet. Well, John said, basically, look, what should happen is if you can figure out what somebody tried to send to you, even if it's wrong, you should try and figure it out, even if they didn't do it exactly to the letter of how it ought to be. It, you should still try and figure it out. You should try and accept it. If, on the other hand, you send something to someone else, you should do your utmost, your best best to make sure that you send them the thing that is the most correct thing you possibly can so that they have to do as little intuitive or guessing work as necessary to make that happen. This to me is the basis for my communication in the modern day. It really truly is. I try to communicate using the, the idea, be conservative in what you send and liberal in what you accept. In this case, uh, it's what you do that Postel said, supposedly said, but I recall it as sin, frankly, initially anyway. The point is, if when you deal with other people, you can accept that they maybe are not able to state things in the best ways, you can take the things that they say in and you can sort of massage them and work them over and try and work with what you what you see as their sort of philosophy on life or or the lens that they're looking at life through, or whatever, and it will change how you forever change, literally, how you deal with other people, right? It'll make it so that when you deal with other people, you recognize that they're not necessarily trying to do or say things that are problematic, but they just don't realize that they're doing it in lots of instances. The same applies to what you put out there, what you do, as, as John would have put it, right? The fact is that what you should do is make sure that what you put out there is as correct as it possibly can be, right? And in so doing, you should make it so that other people have to do less work to figure out what it is that you're trying to say. These, this is an important principle to me. And for this reason, if no other, John Postel should be both to me and to you if you adopt this idea uh, a, a guy who you have a tremendous amount of, res of respect for. But let me just tell you that I, I, you know, even though this is sort of the main message that I'm trying to get across, one of the things that I want to say is I have tremendous respect for the fact that John Postel worked in the background putting tremendous amounts of input into the internet that you see today the reason that you're probably able to see this message at all, right, this video at all, is is largely due in my mind to one Mr. John, I don't know if it's Mr. Or Doctor, what it ended up being, John Postel. And I just want you to understand that that's true. The guy deserves a bunch of credit. I literally term him a lot of times the father of the Internet because of what he accomplished in his life, just working behind the scenes. And this is another lesson that I learned from John. You don't have to be seen to be important. You don't have to be seen to be important. There are a lot of people out there who are termed kingmakers, and there's a good reason for that. But the, the, th the main thing that I want to impart to you today, though, is John's law, Postel's law, also known as the robustness principle, which, as I say, is be conservative in what you do and liberal in what you accept from others. Okay, I need to go ahead and wrap this up. Again, today is March the 5th of, uh, of um, 2021, and I, I'm happy that you are, have come along on Rumble on the podcast and on YouTube. 
Tomorrow's subject is going to be why continue, and I'm going to talk about why some people that you see who are well off, who have been successful, are not just resting on their laurels, but doing, continuing to do things. And I want, and I really sort of want to dig into that, and also it'll explain to you why I, at my current age, am sort of busting into this new platform for me, which is doing all of these videos and so forth that I've been doing. Uh, I hope you're having a good day today. I know that a lot of people uh, con consider today the start of the weekend. In my area, we're, we're kind of having a little bit more dreary, dreary weather, but it's not horrible. And I know that we're coming up on the nicer weather of spring and summer, so that makes it more passable. In any case, I hope things are going well for you. Um, I intend to get another daily summation out when uh, I sign, you know, when I get myself up and about tomorrow. And hopefully, we will see you tomorrow. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Friday, March 5th of 2021. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's religion and politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional, and maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at kpshubert. That's at kpshubert. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurt's Re Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurt's Religion and Politics as well. I have I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurt's Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with, a, with an S dot kpshubert dot com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert dot com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the daily summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.